Well, hello everybody, John Grimsmo here. Got a busy, busy day. Um, as I said yesterday, we have a guest coming. Today's Tuesday, coming on Thursday. So we're cleaning up the shop, we're making it nice. We're uh, finally getting some extra toolboxes and tables that we've been putting off, some shelving for the other shop, um, things of that nature. Sometimes you just need that little spark, that impetus to get going and do stuff. Um, today, my goal, I'm gonna turn that machine on. Maybe I'll do that right now. Because if it's on, I'll actually use it. It's stupid. But uh, yeah, I've, uh, the mist collector works awesome from yesterday. The guys put the filters in and turned it on and got it nice and it works great. So things are rocking there. And uh, Sky's got set up for the bearings going right now. So once we get a couple off, we can look at them real close under the microscope maybe and uh, show you guys what that's all about. But things are going really good there. And yeah. So my current table that I was talking about yesterday, trying to keep clean, it, it got stolen. <laughs> so the table, that wooden table, that we get them from Home Depot, they're really nice. And the same as this, uh, this one right here, and the same as this one right here, um, they've stolen my current table, and they put it over in the finishing department. Apparently they've been cleaning up the finishing side like a lot. I can't wait to go check that out. Either today or tomorrow we'll go see that. And then uh, Barry's at Home Depot right now getting us some rolling uh, toolboxes with a, with a wooden top. So I'm gonna get one of those here. The Swiss table is going to get removed for the finishing side and the rolling toolbox is going to be there. Having the drawers and the work surface is going to be epic. Um, let us keep the top nice and organized. And yeah, I got some things on my list to battle down. The first of which being lunch. Gotcha. New toolboxes. Yeah, this guy here is camouflaged. You can't even see him. Where'd you go? It's happening. It's happening. It's happening right now. So over the past few months, Fraser and I have become pretty good friends with Peter McKinnon who's got an amazing YouTube channel teaching people how to do amazing videos and he does his own vlogs and all kinds of stuff. He also happens to be a huge knife nerd. Um, so since he's coming to visit, he needs a saga. He'll be getting a saga. So this will be his silver nickel aluminum bronze slider. I want to make it special though. I want to add his Pete's Pirate Life logo right on the tip. So you can see my screen there. There it is. Give you a close up. So you can see here I've got his logo embossed into the, uh, the tip of a pen there. I borrowed it from his website, created a vector, created a sketch, extruded it down, 5,000 deep. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's 5,000. It should look good. It might want to go deeper, I'm not sure yet. Um, and then I created a parallel toolpath. So the toolpath is a super tight 1,000 step over with a parallel, so it goes left, right, and up and down. A couple lazy retracts in there, but who cares. And uh, I added this little contour just to make the stock look right. Simulate that. And this is what we're looking at. Should look pretty good. I'm using my tapered engraving end mill. That guy right there. Yeah, this should look really, 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 really good. And to set it up, I'm gonna throw it in fifth axis vise. I've got my ancient Tormac V block, and then I've got a Swiss tooling block, a um, uh, drill holder basically, with an ER16 collet at the top. Part slips in, we'll drop all the way down, I'll clamp it, I'll use the machine, I'll probe the Z and even probably the X and Y of that to get it perfectly dialed and then I'll run the part from there. I'm waking up the sleeping robot. Homing the axes right now. All right, 
So the plan is we'll get the tombstone out of the way, park it back in spot number nine, which will be here. Grab pallet 14. And we're almost done. Grab pallet 14, put it in the machine. Uh, my program's already loaded, my part's tight. I just have to probe X, Y, and Z, and then I should be ready to run this program. Oh yeah. Here you can see a different angle of our V-block and the lathe tool holder and the little button sticking out the top. Let's get the probe in there and measure it up. It's happening. I gotta pause right now so I can show you guys, but I'll turn the coolant on and get this thing rocking. Just a lot of super tiny, tight little movements. It's crunching through code. Forty thousand RPMs, ripems. Doesn't take long. The scroll bar is almost done already. And this is the, f the only machine I have where that scroll bar is actually accurate. The Fanuc machines are not. See, look, it's almost done. Almost done. Super almost done. There we go, we're done. Coolant purge. Oh, I can't wait to see this. Oh. <laughs> Peter, you're gonna love this. What the heck? I wonder if it kicked up a burr, I'm not sure. I'll have to look at it really close. Wow. I just realized the V-block that I usually use the microscope to hold everything is what we just used in the Kern. Because I don't actually know if it can reach this with the viewfinder. Yeah, probably if I go all the way down. Just, just no. I need like this much height. All right, so I've got one of the PG blocks, the Regal Fix blocks, as my little stand there. Looking good. It definitely kicked up a burr. Um, that tool might be getting a little dull, I'm not sure. I could easily polish it down, but that kind of loses the uh, the swirliness of that beautiful turn finish. So I'm not sure if I want to do that. 
I mean, these are the little kind of burrs that literally just your fingerprints are gonna get off, just rubbing it down with your fingerprint. Um, so I'm not sure. But it does look sick. I'm gonna send this to the group chat with like three people and be like, here's this with no context. Guess what's happening? <laughs> I think it looks sweet. When do we... He, he, he was complaining about the burrs. He's like, you gotta knock those down. No, it's easy. No, it feels fine. You can almost not even feel them. It's like the most slight burr ever. I guess if I'm not putting pressure, it's more noticeable. Yeah. Yeah. But like you said, they'll wear over time. Did you just like 3D the whole thing? It looks sweet. The finish, like the, the floor finish looks really good. It's got that like prismatic. I think my my I think my microscope shots actually do it not justice. Yeah, they don't look too good, honestly. Yeah, they just accentuate all the burrs and everything. In person, it doesn't look that bad. No, it looks great in person. I wonder if I can get a better picture. So before you go complaining that I should definitely sand that down. We're both agreeing that in person, it's great, it's fine. Literally, your fingers are gonna just smooth that out over time, you can't feel it, and uh, I don't wanna ruin the finish of that part, so I'm happy with it. Oh, baby. Kind of a cool phenomenon, when you rotate the slider, the button rotates in the opposite direction. This is kinda neat. That looks good, I'm really happy with that. Yep, Saga Pen, this is number 479. Man, we've made almost 500 of these bad boys, I love it. There you go, Peter, hope you like it. You'll be here in a couple days. You'll be stoked. Okay, so that worked great. Very happy with that, got to play with the Kern. Um, I do have some other stuff. I, I don't know if I'll be cutting anything else today on it, but I got some programming and design stuff to do. It's nearing the end of the day already. Um, Sky is busy cleaning and prepping and setting up the new workbenches and getting rid of the mess and everything. He has asked me to step in and uh, continue making these bearings that he's been banging his head against the Swiss for the past few hours on. There, he, he's making bearings, that's great. There's just some little, all the fine tuning that uh, we just don't have time to really sit together and and work on tonight. But I'm gonna make some changes myself, I'm gonna run some. Eric is completely out, so Eric can't finish any knives uh, and hasn't been able to for the past couple days. So I'm just gonna get him a handful of bearings and then uh, tomorrow Sky can, I'm gonna take notes of the things that I changed and then Sky can uh, take over from there tomorrow. But they're coming together. So I fell down the rabbit hole, trying to make that uh, button look as nice as possible for Peter. Which one? That one? I wasn't 100% happy with the burrs, so I was like, you know what, let me just use my PFG stones, my flat ground stones, and just try to go like this on the stones. I, I couldn't do it without tipping it a little bit, so that messed it up a little bit. Then I did it more, and then more, and then more, and then I polished it on some sandpaper, and then I went to the scotch bread wheel, and then more sandpaper, and I, I came to something that looks good, but not, not the great, like it does look really cool, but I can do something better. So the root of the problem is the tool was slightly worn out. So I just put a brand new tool in, I'm gonna put it in, touch it off, make another one, and then we'll see how that one looks. Cause it did look really cool, just raw.
And off we go again for round two. Not too shabby. See, I'll get the other one. I need Fraser's macro lens. Okay, the new one is on the left, the sanded one is on the right. I don't know, the one on the left just has more contrast. You got your turned shiny outside, and you have your sort of matte milled inside. They both look cool. The one on the left, the new one looks perfect, so I'll stick with that one. Well, I ended up staying late tonight. After fiddling with all kinds of little things, I'm onto the bearings now and uh, making a, I'd say that's probably 85% good and that last 15, surprisingly, is not gonna take that much time to, to nail down. I think just a couple more bearings and I'll, I'll have it good here. Uh, so where I'm at right now is I pressed in a ball so that green ball right at the top of the bearing, I press that in. You can see the two lower holes have flappies still inside, just little burrs that uh, we'll have to manually clean out. But as I, as I fine tune the holes, they'll get better. Uh, so I pressed in a ball and I'm going from kind of memory and experience how hard it is to push in that ball. I'll show you on the next one. Um, and then I'm gonna go to the microscope. The ball has lateral play this way, so in order to center the, the inside, it's not just a hole, it's like a little cup on the inside. So like, you know, the ball is round, right? So inside the hole, it actually cups it and supports it uh, instead of just being a through hole because then it would just fall right through. So the hole actually is like a reverse hourglass. It goes flat walls and then up to an arc where it holds the ball. Um, and the, the lollipop tool that we put in I don't know if I showed you, maybe I'll zoom in on it. It's very small. It's like one millimeter in diameter. Um, kind of goes in and spirals and gets bigger and bigger and bigger and then smaller and smaller and smaller. And I hand wrote that code a couple years ago to make this part and it works great. But anyway, I'm messing with the Z offset to get the ball position perfect. So that when you push the ball this way, it goes so much. When you push it the other way, it goes so much. And right now I think it's a little bit off. So that's what I'm up to. strategically analyzing the part under the 40 times 40 times microscope um, I have determined that the ball hole position needs to come towards the engraving side a little bit and it needs to be a little bit bigger diameter so I'm going to tweak that on the control now the code for this one is a little uh, variably so we have variable 180 which is something I just threw in 3 thou uh, adjustment so I can adjust one of the chamfers with this variable and it kind of goes in here and it goes move to Z.5, move to X140 plus whatever the variable is and then down here as well plus whatever the variable is because it's doing a 45 degree taper and I want it to plus the same one on both sides using one variable. That's not that exciting. What's a little bit cooler is when I go down here, I've got some variables to make the hole bigger or smaller so I got to do that right now. Right now it's a 125. I want to make it 135. 14. Let's make it 14. Depth for engraving? No. I want depth of the actual tool itself. So let me. Um, that'll be a wear offset. Do that right now. Wear tools. This is 550Z. 550, Z is 160, to go towards the engraving a little bit. Um, let's go with 2,000? 1,5 it is. Add it to the 16, makes it 31. Perfect. Um, okay, and then back to here, I just wanna show you real quick. So I've got a while loop. So while variable 199 starts off as one, while it's less than 10, do one. One is a chunk of code 
So you got some clearance moves, and then where's my one start? Uh, I guess this is one. I thought they'd be able to do one, do that. Oh yeah, there's an N one. Anyway, so I've got this repeating code pattern, which basically does half arcs, a series of half arcs and moves up in Z, uh, like a tiny little bit, one thou, two thou, three thou, with a radius, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 50, 60, I'm looking at this number right here. There we go. So it's moving in a spirally pattern down to 80 thou, and then it goes to center, and then it pulls out, and then it indexes the spindle 36 degrees, and then it adds one value to 199. Um, so that 199 counts up to 10 for each of the 10 holes around the perimeter, and then end one. So when it says do one, do all this, repeat it, 10 times until that is 10 and then end it and then skip back to here and then keep going down and then continue and then we do the Grimsmo engraving. Um, I don't know if I've shown that, if I can do it on this camera. So you can see between every hole, uh, G-R-I-M-S-M-O. And the first time I implemented that, I spelled it wrong and I didn't even realize and I shipped a bunch, and people are like, um, there's too many M's in here. Grimismismismo. Didn't even see it. So, G-R-I-M-S-M-O. Yeah, that's spelled right. That's good. So you can see little issues, like a burr on the inside. We had some bad ones here with multiple burrs and grossness. Especially on that inner, inner chamfer, inner diameter. Uh, but I got rid of those. So we're getting there. This guy made these ones, he made some of these, and these are the three that I've made, and it's almost dialed. Like next, probably next part will be almost perfect, and then the one after that will be perfect, perfect, and then I can go home. And then we'll just run this all day tomorrow. Uh, I just don't want to run it tonight. I could, but I don't know. Not quite ready for that sort of commitment this late at night. I figured I'd show you guys too what's going on. Since it's running plastic, I don't need coolant. I can show you. So I, I've got it running, I just need to speed it up. Oh, so much happens on this machine at once. Okay, the main tool is drilling, threading, not threading, just boring the ID. Main side's done already. Now it's just waiting for the subside this whole time. So the subside is looping around in those half circles that I was telling you about. And then once it gets to the 10th hole, it'll do the engraving with the same tool. It even does that inside chamfer with the same tool too. You know, try to utilize as much as you can. And if we went to the variables and we looked at 199, I think it was, we'd see it be at number like eight now. And that'd be something like number nine. Uh, I would do it, but I'm watching this right now. That might be nine or 10, I totally lost count. Here we go, now it's doing the engraving. Nice and zippy. Pulls it back, ejector pachoom, spits it into the conveyor, gets ready for part off, gets up in there, parts it off. I've got it set to do only one part at a time right now, which is this button right there. And then it waits for me. And the conveyor is on and our magical bounty is right there. Okay, you're not focusing on anything right now. Come on. It's very possible that I pushed some wrong button on this camera. Oh, I think I got it. There's a servo AF button. Servo as F uh, that was off, and now I think I can focus much better. Yeah, okay, focusing works. Let me uh, pop a ball in there and I'll show you how I do that. So some of you may be asking, bro, why do you make your own bearings? Can't you just buy that stuff? You can, but they suck. So I'm using my saga pen to pop out this little ball that's rolling away. Oftentimes we'll use a tray or something to hold this stuff, but the table is clearly crooked. 
our temporarily placed table. Get in, oh no, I lost it. Oh no, I feel it. All right, so I'm gonna feel with my finger, give a little, yeah, it feels good. I don't know if you could hear that little pop. That's a good sign. Uh, if the hole is too big, then it'll just slide right through. But we don't want that, we wanna pop it. Now I'm going to, I'm moving it side by side just by eyeball and it looks way better than before. I'm going to go to the microscope and uh, take a closer peek. Yeah, you can see the engraving on that side. Still some flappy birds on the inside, not super happy about that. But we do have a cleaning fixture that we pop this guy onto and then it, it scrubs all the, uh, the flaps out, but it's still not ideal because it takes time. And if the machine can do it perfectly, then much better. Repping my bro Brad Souther today. Love this shirt. I've got two or three of his shirts and I wear them all the time. Um, so I took the air gun, just I blew it out really quickly and all the burrs are gone. That's awesome. So maybe we just, this needs to be one of those scenarios where we have like a bucket with holes in the bottom and we just blast into the bucket and they bounce all around and all the burrs just kind of disappear. And then they'll get ultrasonic clean to get all the oil off. And uh, yeah, cause they do come off the machine a little bit oily. Ball position was almost perfect. So I gave it like seven tenths of wear, seven ten thousandths of an inch. It's nothing. Um, but, damn, we got a good bearing. I haven't made these in nine months, I think. And now I'm not making them. Sky's making them. I mean, I've spent like less than an hour today finalizing what he set up today. Perfect. Um, maybe I will run some tonight. Just like not a million of them, but you know, a handful. So that we can come home, come here in the morning and be like, ooh, parts. And then we can check them and see if they're good. So anyway, that's it for me today. Uh, yeah, very exciting, but what am I trying to say? I'm, I'm trying to say without saying that Peter's coming in a couple days to visit and film and do some cool stuff, and I'm very excited. And that's like two days away, and uh, looking forward to that. So, stay tuned. I don't know, bye-bye. I've stayed so late that the first pallet of the night, first of two, is finishing right now. I can hear the fan blowing everything off. So what it did there at the end, the fan goes up and then it did some thinking, some logic, and it rewound the code and it, it's running the second instance of that code shifted over to the second pallet. And it starts off using the tool you just saw load up with the coolant, grinding the detent ball flat to the top of the ball. So yeah, it's kind of late. First pallet's already done. Normally I don't stay that long. I mean, it's not midnight or anything, but it's, it's late. Anyway, this time I'm gone.